Hi, I'm Jenna Lyons and I just spoke to Kara. We had an amazing talk and actually, I'm actually really glad we met. I'd love for you all to listen and um, don't call my therapist, okay? I'll do that. Hi, this is Kara. You're watching Really Famous where you get to know your favorite celebrities on a really intimate level because I was a therapist, so that's how I roll. Right now, you're about to really get to know Jenna Lyons. She was the president of J. Crew for 27 years. But do you know who she is behind those famous black glasses? You are about to find out. And um, yeah, it was a strange, it was the strangest thing. And also my phone, you know, my email was turned off. I didn't have, you know, I just, it was weird. And I didn't have any social media presence. So people didn't know how to get a hold of me. It was just a sort of a strange time. I was really, really alone. And I, you know, granted I needed a break. I hadn't, I hadn't, I hadn't looked at my calendar and seen nothing on it in years. I mean, my calendar was back to back to back to back to back to back all the time. And, you know, all of a sudden I had like literally all this time and I didn't know what to do. <laughs> and I know that sounds strange, but, um, no, yeah. that sounds totally normal. Honestly, like I can't, that seems like you're suddenly in this place. That's scary. It was scary. It was, I think it was more scary because I, I, I thought, I was going to wake up in the morning and want to exercise every morning. And I thought I was going to want to start cooking. And I thought I was going to want to take a ceramics class and I want to maybe learn how to tango. And I didn't, I didn't do any of those things. I was so like, just kind of raw. And, um, and I just like, I, I didn't even watch TV. I thought I didn't, I, I read a few books, but nothing like that really to speak. I mean, not as many as I would have expected or should have. And I, I just kind of like recharged. I'm, thrilled that I did in retrospect, but that was a really, really dark moment. <laughs> so did you just find yourself like sitting and just thinking about things then? Yeah. And I, I mean, I think, yeah, I found myself like I got a dog, I got a puppy <laughs> and, um, you know, I spent just a lot of time, like when reflecting day where you could walk, I used to walk a lot. I would go and eat lunch by myself and, you know, I read a lot of issues of the New Yorker, but nowhere near as many as I should have. And I just kind of like, I went to bed really early and I don't know. It was, I like, I wish I could tell you what I did. <laughs> yeah, but it probably, it's all blur, right? It's kind of. Blur. I mean, it, it is really amazing what can happen when you don't actually put your mind to doing things because so much time went by and I was like, I didn't accomplish anything. And I was like, that's okay. I didn't accomplish But you anything. did in well, hindsight. Later on, later on, I did, yes. And that I was a big accomplishment. I think I accomplished something much more internal. I think from the outside looking in, it would have looked like I didn't do anything and it was far more of like internal work of just kind of like putting, <laughs> piecing yeah. this potato head back together. <laughs> yeah, it's processing, that's work. It just looks inactive, but it's Thank not. God. You're, a, you're a therapist so you can understand. Thank yes. you. Yes, yes, yeah. please. I'm telling it like it is. I'm being honest with you. So did you talk to anybody? Like, was there anybody who was with you or like, did you have a therapist or anybody to talk through? I didn't have a therapist at the time. I probably should have, um, I do now. <laughs> um, you know, I, yeah, I was talking to friends. I mean, I have a really great core group that have been near me and close to me for years and they are still there and that's really nice. Um, but you know, all the invitations stopped coming and that was really strange, but I'm, I'm happy that I, you know, like I said, all the core people that I was friends with before I still am, and that's been great. And they're, you know, still my close friends. Yeah. And so I have to, I give you credit too, because you're, you're just, you're talking about it pretty easily too. Like you didn't just put it in a box somewhere and try to just forget it. Like you're, you know, you're talking about like it was, I'm sure it was hard for all of the invitations to stop and everything. And you're, you're in a healthy way talking about it. I think, I think, you know, a little bit of what I was saying before is like, I, I, I have, having had that moment, I'm so grateful that I'm getting to go, I'm going back into public life, having had that experience of getting all the invitations and feeling really included and then just it being over because I think now I don't, it doesn't have the same weight to me anymore. You know, I think that it was the first, the first time you get invited to some of those fancy parties and famous people are sitting next to you. It's like, you know, it's so exciting and, and it still is exciting. Don't get me wrong. I'm not, I'm not knocking it, but I think that I don't, I realize, I know what it is now. Like, yeah. it's, not, it's not my life. It's not reality. It is just something connected to something I'm doing to help support. It's like, 
I, I have a very different perspective and I'm glad that I'm having, you know, some more, you know, let, no one's having an event right now. So there's no, I'm not getting invited to anything anyway, cause no one is, but you know, I think as that comes back into play, I don't know if it won't have the same weight for me the way it did the first time around. Right. Right. That makes sense. So that perspective is so, it was really invaluable. I almost want to say, I wouldn't normally say this, but it's almost good probably that you no, I'm not going to say it's it's good oh. that you didn't have a therapist. I'm saying it's good. Whatever happened to you was good. I mean, you know what I mean. Oh, I get it. I get it. And listen, I, 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 did, I did it for the first year. I then did have someone. Yeah. Um, but I think, you know, I also have some really close friends who are, you know, are very um, just really good at, at you know, they're at admitting things and like being open about admitting, just being like, that actually really probably does not feel good and it's okay to say it. And I think that I've had a lot of support in that area of saying like, it's, it's okay to be vulnerable. And I like, you know, I'm a big Chrissy Teigen fan because I think she like puts it all out there. Like she talks about openly things that most people, women in particular are not encouraged to speak about publicly. And I think that's really refreshing. And I think also, and people appreciate it. So I'm, I just don't, I don't have like a lot of shame around all the bad stuff anymore. I think I used right. to- That's good. Put it in yeah. a box. So like the, the friends that you have, is this kind of like what you're talking about earlier, how like people who you feel kinship to, are they similar to you in, in a certain way? I mean, probably. I don't know if I'd have to like, I think, I mean, yes, I don't, I don't think I'm trying to think. I don't, most people I know that I am close to in some way have experienced something challenging something that has been uh, something they'd had to push through, um, you know, and so, um, you know, yeah, I think all of them have some sort of moment in their life where they really felt unloved or unseen or, you know, not like they didn't fit in. And I th that's pretty, that's pretty connect. Like there's some connected tissue there for sure. Yeah. And also to, the willingness to talk about it, to learn from it and talk about it and move on from it. Some more than others. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> not everybody's going to have that <laughs> same ability or desire, I guess. Right. I think it's it's a, a learned skill. Like I think it took me a while to sort of get comfortable with like really being open about it. And I think, but it, what I will say is that anytime I have ever been open about that has been the thing that people have reflected back to me that they appreciated and that they remember it. And I was like, okay, well that's like, I'll, that's helpful to know because it's always right. been a positive reflection, which is nice. It's, it's like counterintuitive, right? Cause everybody's trying to be perfect yes. and that's not what people connect to and want. I, it is such, no, I mean, I talk about this all the time. I think it's so true. I think, and it's so ironic because I think when, you know, in this world where Instagram is probably the number one play and there's so much about being liked and, you know, how, how many people are following you and all of that, the fact of the matter is it's, it's actually not what, you know, the, the perfection is really, it's sort of, it's intimidating and actually doesn't like make me feel like great. <laughs> It makes me, it gives me anxiety when someone's got like posting a really perfect life and they're doing everything perfect. And like, I'm like, oh my God, re really? Is it really like that? <laughs> I don't know. Well, you and everybody, that's the problem with it. It's so curated, right? It is interesting because what is that about when you think about it? Like, we're just saying now that people connect to the flaws and it's much more relatable when like you share what you're embarrassed or whatever to talk about. And then here we have like Instagram specifically with all these images that are curated to perfection. It's like, doesn't make sense almost. They don't add up. Well, you're the therapist. What is going on? I know. Figure it out. What is going on? They think what? they want that. But I do think a lot of people scrolling through, through Instagram and any social media platform, there's some of it, it's great to connect on. There's, I do think there's value in it, but I also think that plenty of people have those feelings that you're saying like when they're scrolling through and they're looking at all these images that are perfect it just it just gives you a yucky feeling i mean and in defense of instagram i do like some of my favorite things to watch are like dental like people have really terrible teeth and then they get them completely fixed because i love like my teeth are a total disaster so i love looking at those i'm kind of i like kind of like watching pimple pop it's so gross wait, wait you're this is what you're watching on instagram did you see cancer <laughs> I have and never seen either one. Of, like people having epic fails. I love fa like when they're like, you know, like this, I, the, I watched one the other day where a girl in a mini skirt and high heels got out into the, out of the car in her snow and like literally went flat face. No, she didn't get hurt. Thank God. But she like slid all the way down her driveway and she got up and she was like, and it was just the cutest thing. I don't know. I love that puppies. Like, so it's not all, it's not all perfection, but that's basically, yes, I have a right. very, that's, that is next to 
all of the you know makeup tutorials and stuff that I love watching. But yes, I have a very strange. Right. <laughs> that is so funny. I've never seen either of those beginning ones. I mean, I feel like you're talking about sort of a TikTokish video after too. Like there are some really funny ones. Well, I I'm not on TikTok, although. <laughs> Cat just asked me to download it and then I looked at it and I was like, I have to make an account. I don't want to do that. But um, I do really, I love, I like, I, I watch my, the, the other one is construction fails. It's brilliant. Have you seen construction fails on Instagram? Oh. oh my God. They're like, things were like, you know, stairs going into nowhere or a door opening and there's like it, two flights down and there's nothing there. And just like, you know, people building around the toilet seat. I mean, it's just like the funniest things I love watching. I, they're is funny. that the name of the account or is that like the uh, yes. hashtag to follow? It's called construction fails or yeah. Oh, okay, I'm gonna have to look it up for sure. That's so funny. <laughs> right, so there's so much, there's a lot of good entertainment and whatnot. And even things that you don't relate to, it's still even without relatability, there's entertainment. Yes, and so, like, I love a flub up. And also, so also there's for, even for your show, for example, for Stylish, there's like you have they have there's a there's an account so you I, you have your own account yep. and then like on instagram specifically there's one for stylish and then i know that there are pictures posted somebody posts pictures of a lot of the items that you decorate the homes with do you so, even know this well okay there's pop up it which is the pop -up. <laughs> yeah that's it oh the pop-up shop we died that's me that's i'm that we so what we did so i'll back up so okay uh, and i shouldn't say me it's, it's the team um it's um we were gonna have a pop-up show, a pop-up shop as the last episode. So it was gonna be the way that we were going to do, that was gonna be the, the launch party, it was gonna be the marketing. So that's where we're gonna have editors and, and any press come. And this was before the pandemic. And so I live in a building that has a retail storefront downstairs and the retail storefront was empty. So we rented that storefront and we started buying all this stuff for the pop-up shop. So we bought vintage furniture, we made some clothes, we bought some makeup things and we bought candles and we had things, you know, we. We commissioned things and all these different things along the way. And believe it or not, um, <laughs> you know, the pandemic hit and we had to really rethink it. And so we decided to just take, create little vignettes within the space downstairs and then take pictures of them and sell all the product that we had purchased. We had all these vendors who had Got been it. the show. So we've been selling all of it and we literally sold it like crazy over the weekend we were in there all weekend long um and like doing stories and taking pictures and we stopped posting we just put stories up because the stories when we were putting up stories it was just like gone 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 we sold like i mean it was crazy it was <laughs> I'm, I'm happy it's over it was exhausting i'm realizing more and more that so there's just cross promotion and multi-platform everything now so like you see something on tv it's also going to be sold even if it's within a show like it used yeah. to be product placement you know we would call it that in a tv show or something it's such a different world yeah right but now this is like everywhere i mean you probably know that right you 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 see it and you're part of it and everything else I mean, you have experience with it I'm learning more and more about it each day because I think in my old world, it didn't really, I didn't have the same right. level of opportunity in terms Product of placement. Yeah. Now I'm sort of, I, I'm a different level of understanding. And truthfully, like what I like is being able to, like a lot of the brands that we shop were, uh, that we were supporting were very small. Um, so we didn't really buy any big box brands and we bought vintage furniture from, you know, smaller, like we live auctioneers and, um, and pop, uh, pop up home, which is a place in LA that I, that I love. And so people that were sort of smaller companies, you know, um, and we really tried to support younger brands. Right, right, right. I love that. And I also love on the show that there's so much Zara. I love Zara personally, love it. So I'm like, yeah, there's Zara, 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 Zara. <laughs> Get excited about that. I'm all for it. So do you get, so are you, do you now with the pandemic, are you out and about much? Like, do you get to get dressed often or no? What's your typical? No, I mean, I, I put on a dress for you, but I'm wearing sweatpants below. Like, I'm, yeah, no, yeah. No joke. That's my pants. See? I love it. The dress. So you're wearing a dress <laughs> with pants. Father. Look, I have a dress on too. I don't have, this is a dress. Um, I don't have sweatpants underneath, but it's because it gets hot in this room that I'm in because I have a lot of windows. I mean, I didn't even pull the dress all the way down. <laughs> I'm wearing Converse sneakers because that's what I wore this morning. I mean, so like, ha so, ha so most days are you not dressed in makeup and everything? I mean, most days, it depends. If I'm doing press, I, I put on makeup. If I'm doing Zoom calls with the team, then no, I mean, um, I'm not going anywhere, you know? Right, I have, so does that, is that like a, is that relaxing for you or is it like frustrating? No, I hate it. I miss my shoes. I want to get dressed up. I love it. I miss, I miss all my heels. I miss my sparkly things. I, I love getting dressed up. I appreciate not feeling pressured to, but I, 
I miss it so much. I miss, I miss people. I miss hugging people. I miss people's perfume. I miss wearing earrings. I miss, you know, I miss it all. I love it. Same. I love it. I mean, I don't, it's not like I want to get dressed up every single day, but no. to look in my closet sometimes and see shoes that I haven't worn in a long time that I love. Why? I know. I agree. Well, well, when, where do you live in New York or in LA? I'm right outside New York. Oh, okay. Great. Well then when the pandemic is over, we can have a shoe visit. Definitely. I bought a pair of shoes recently and I was like, I don't know why I'm buying this pair of shoes. They're like super high heels and they're just to dress up. And I, I was like, I'm posting it online to say, I just, I must be losing my mind because I just bought these shoes as if I have somewhere to wear them. And like, of course I don't, but it was a pleasure to post them because then everybody was like, oh, these shoes are great. Take a picture at home, whatever. I look, I'm, I haven't done that. I have definitely put on feathers, but not, no, I haven't, like my shoe choices. Mm. I do feel better though. I will say when I am on the day, sometimes I don't, you know, like I won't put on makeup. There are no zoom calls, nothing. I'm just really getting work done at the computer and I will not do anything, but I'll feel so, uh, and then the next day, if I get to put, wear something, I'm yeah. happy. Oh, I, I agree. I feel the same way. I mean, I feel really grateful when I can actually like, 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 I, I noticed, I know even my son, when he like comes out with be like, oh, mom, you know, and he, and, and there's something really, you know, it's like, oh, okay. You noticed, you know, it's like, I've tried yeah. <laughs> hair is done and my makeup is done. It's nice. So your know. son is a teenager now. He's right. Is he a teenager? Yeah. How's it going? Good advice. <laughs> well, it's, it's, there's a shift. <laughs> how old is he? He's just turned 14. Okay. And he like, his mom, he's 14 and he's all, he's like 5'10". He's gigantic and like skinny. And um, yeah, he's a, he's really, he's given it to me. <laughs> it mean, is. He's yeah. a great kid, but he is definitely making me work hard right now. So he lives with you totally, right? No, oh, he goes back between my, my ex-husband and myself. Okay. And how's that whole arrangement? I mean, I think listen, there's no doubt it is not easy for him. I think, you know, he, you know, has two different homes. He doesn't, he's, he's, his stuff is in two different places. He's, you know, it's, it's, I think there's a certain amount of it that he has realized is, can be cool, um, you know, and, and I think there's a certain amount of it that I think is just frustrating and hard. And I think, um, you know, I, there's no question that this new homeschool situation is an app. Uh, it's, I've never seen anything more um, sort of depressing, honestly. You know, there's just the lack of human connection and friends. And, you know, he was saying, he's like, because nothing is happening, there's no school interaction. There, there's no tea. There's nothing to talk about. You know, normally they're like, what's the tea? Like, yeah. who's getting who? What's going on? Oh, this happened. Oh, you know, and there's like, there's like this, all this inner dynamic and everyone's getting caught up and what's happening and, you know, getting caught in the rain together or like, you know, uh, talking about the substitute teacher, like whatever it is that there's some sort yeah. of like interaction and now they have none of that. And they, you know, his connections with friends are, are thin because they're just not nothing. They're not having any experiences together. And it's, I think it's, it's like so emotionally not healthy. It's a major bummer. Yeah. I think that's a total bummer for everybody. And there's nothing we can do about it, right? It is what it is. And everybody's experiencing it together, you know? So it's like, at least like, you know, his generation, for example, like he'll, the 10 years, 20 years from now, they'll be like, oh, remember. It's funny. It will yeah, be and totally, it'll be like 9-11 in that sense. Not, not, I mean, yeah. from like such an, such an, a, a, a moment that rocked the world that everyone will have had some experience that is connected. And I do think there's something, I mean, that will be very interesting and valuable. I do think it is, as a parent, it is so hard to watch and to, right. to you know, and I think, you know, while I think it would be, I, you know, the good news is in my house, because my office is right downstairs, there's a lot of people around. So like, you know, we don't, not that, well, not right now, but there's, there are people around. I mean, there's a core team that does come and there are some people around and it's, um, you know, there's that, that's nice because it's a little bit more like some yeah. interaction, but in general, I think it's really hard. Well, I wonder if it's almost like what we were talking about before about that time that you had that you looked like you were doing nothing and it turned into something big and important in your life, if maybe this will be like that in a similar way. I don't know. I mean, I, I wish, I think, 
I think the one big difference and the thing that I'm struggling with the most is that loss. Well, because I'm working and I can't be connected to him as much as I would like to be, um, you know, that means that he's entertaining himself, which means he's probably on the computer or gaming or, you know, in between whatever, all the other things are, you know, in between school and when, and it, that's been really, that's to me the hard part. I don't, I wish, you know, I think for me, the thing that I was doing felt more restorative because I was actually having quiet time, but I could still see my friends and I could still go out to lunch with people and I could still go out for a drink and, you know, go for a walk very easily and like sit in the park. And, you know, there was tons of people around. It felt, that, but this being alone and quiet and home in a room with a box and a screen is a different experience, I think, than I had. So my, I think my experience felt more restorative. And I think this is, feels, I think, maybe very claustrophobic um, uh, right now. And I, I think it's, a, I, I hope you're right that it might be restorative, but I just, you know, I, I don't know. I just, I do think I agree with you. And I feel like the human connection is really a pro like the lack of human connection is really a problem. And even though I hate zoom and it's not the same thing, I am thankful for the ability to connect. Like we are right now. Like to me, that's invaluable. No question. I mean, I don't know. It is amazing that I'd never even heard of zoom before this and thank God it was invented. Cause I know, you know, I know that there's some things like Google meet and all that, but the fact of the matter is like, it's become, you know, it's, uh, I do, I think Zoom is going to become like maternity clothes for me though. It's like, you know, yes. when you had a baby and you're just like, I never want to see that dress again. <laughs> like I'm not, and it just goes away. Right. I totally. Can't. So looking back on your life, I mean, we've talked a lot about it and you've reflected on a lot and I totally appreciate that. And I love it. Is there anything that you would do differently if you were to go back? Yes. I mean, I think there's so many things. I don't even know where to begin. Um, <laughs> I think I think that I gave away so much to others in the sense that I like I looked to others to validate me as opposed to like making it an inside job. I really um, didn't trust myself and didn't and like my lack of confidence undermined my ability to make clear decision making sometimes, particularly in the beginning of my career and in my life. And um, and I also really like, I don't know. I really thought that like, I always, I always thought that I was dressing for someone else. And I realized that when I started to dress for myself, it was working, it worked out way better. You know, I think I dressed off, I dressed the way I thought people wanted me to look, you know, and I remember, um, yeah, particularly that there was this idea that you, I don't know, I thought I had to look what I thought what sexy was, was what, um, it was to me, I didn't, I didn't understand sexy and, and attraction as being, um, about confidence and owning your yourself. I associate it with like, okay, well, it's okay. It's about showing skin and, and, you know, having that kind of look and body, but I don't have that. So what do I do? And it's just was a really, you know, I got really caught up in all of that. And uh, I wish I would have had a little bit more um, clarity and, and self-confidence earlier on. And but I guess, you know, it happens when it happens. So. But it's not like you couldn't, like you couldn't do it at this, like you just didn't know at the time. It's not like you made the wrong decision or whatever, you were just still growing. Yeah. Right. And I, I wouldn't have slept with that guy on the beach in Cancun. <laughs> Why not? Just a bad decision, it's bad. I love it, I love it, I love it. You learned that sexy was from within. Well, I think wow. it was, I think I learned that it, it was, it was when you like the people who are the sexiest are the people who sort of own their skin and are confident. I'm far more attracted to that than I am. I mean, of course I'm attracted to like great boobs because I, you know, I like boobs, but, but I think what I realized is that wasn't the only thing. It wasn't what made me attracted to it, but I was attracted to and other people was like, like the way that they held a room and the way that they actually could, you know, the way that they move within the world and, and that confidence was, was what I was most attracted to. And I realized that I wasn't spending as much time thinking about that as I was thinking about like, oh, you know, is my skirt tight enough? Is my, you know, do I look cute? Like my, is my hair, like, I just, I didn't get it. And I think it took me a while to really understand that nuance. But that nuance you figured out on your own by observing. I think I just got, I got older, I got, um, and I also, what I realized is that when I was more confident, I always got more attention. And that's where it sort of became, it's like when I felt in my skin and I felt good and I felt like I wasn't trying to please other people, that's when I had the most people coming at me, which was so awkward. And when I was trying, got no attention at all. <laughs>
I think that I've heard that before a lot. And I think that it's true, right? It's all about what you're giving off, what people respond to. Yeah. yeah. And not at all those little things that you nitpick about yourself. Yeah. I mean, I honestly, I think it's, it's hard because I think we do a number on women in particular and telling them they need to be a certain way in order to get to be attractive. And I think that's just, it's unfortunate because it's so physical and not really about like how you show up. Right. What's the image do you think that people have of you who don't know you? Oh God, I don't know. You tell me. I have no idea. Really? Nobody has ever said like, oh, you're surprising me. You're not at all what I thought you were. Well, I think I've heard that, but it's not like they've said you're this, this, I would have thought you'd be this, this, and this. I think, I mean, I do think that there's a certain amount of like, I've gotten people who I know are very nervous because they, I think, but I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I think people will think I, I think maybe more serious um, or a little bit more like uptight. Maybe that has more to do with the glasses and the slick back hair um, or my school mom dress that I'm wearing today. <laughs> right, um, right. But um, yeah, I mean, probably just that I'm a little bit more goofy and um, approachable than they may have would have thought. That has yeah, I think I would agree with that. I would say if you're going to ask me what I would have thought before, if it was just from what like your public image that you had before, which again, maybe I wasn't, I had never seen you in person, hadn't seen you really talking much like on the sh on your show. Now you really get to see more of the person. And that again is different. It's written, you know, what's in print versus what you actually see on TV. <laughs> like a text, you know, texting has saved my relationship with my mother because she used to say things and I was like, oh, and now she'll say them and put a f smiley face and a heart. And I'm like, oh, okay. Like she doesn't mean it the way I'm thinking, you know, it's like, I think text is a little bit like, as you said, like reading, you don't have any, yeah. you don't have any feeling, you don't have any emotion, you don't have any, um, you know, there's no, you can't deliver like tenderness or, you know, humility or it's hard, you know, and that's, um, it doesn't happen in a, and you also yeah. are edited. Somebody gets to write what they, gleaned, they don't write everything you say. Um, right. That's not always who you are. And something I noticed too, after I started the podcast, because we started as a podcast and now we, we're video too, so we're streaming. But when I started that, I also thought to myself, it's so interesting because when I was a writer, we had to, we were required to, even if it wasn't a slant or an angle that you were taking, my goal was always the same to try to illustrate the essential person or somehow get the reader to understand who that person is. And of course it's based on my own experience with that person, right? Whoever, if I was interviewing a celebrity, let's say and writing a profile, but there has to be some sort of a narrative just because it's in print and it's a story. So it requires a narrative and that, so even if it's the most well-meaning, open-minded, whatever, it's still really hard. That's what I love about this kind of talk is that what people are going to see and hear is exactly you. Like there is no, no it's nobody else's perspective. It's just how you are and how they perceive you. And each person of course will be a little bit different. For sure. No, that's true. I mean, you can tell, it's always interesting, you know, I can tell the writers who walked in with a sort of preconceived bias and there's the, just, you can feel it and um, and it happens. Yes, there is a, there needs to be a sort of a beginning, middle and end. There needs to be some sort of narrative arc. And also if somebody wants to write something that isn't necessarily a carbon copy of another article, but I may have had very similar questions. And so my answers may not have, yeah. you know, directed them differently. And so how did then they they have to, I, I get it. Like, I totally understand. <laughs> it's, it's not uncommon. It's just, it's, it, it creates a narrative that isn't necessarily the whole person. Right. So I love no narrative. It's freedom to me. Oh, it's and great. it's truth, it's really. Great. And totally. it's the real person. The last question I'd like to ask is, who are you really? Like, who's the real Jenna Lyons? Oh, God. I mean, I don't know. I think I'm, uh, ooh, that's just, I mean, it's a tough question to answer. Um, I mean, I think I'm probably equal parts, like, you know, a person who like really wants to make things beautiful and make like things and also equal parts like that kid who got picked on, you know, like I, I think I'm, i there's, there is a, you know, I have had a lot of really, you know, disparate experiences in my life in terms of like feeling really unseen and um, and sort of rejected to like feeling really um, included and and respected and like they're they're so different and so you know that informs <laughs> all of it um, you know but I think it also makes me like empathetic to people who 
don't feel included and who maybe don't feel, um, and I don't like people to feel excluded. It's my least favorite thing in the world. So that's, I don't know. I don't know. Is that a good answer? No, that is a great answer. And I think, yeah, I mean, you're an analytical person. You're a reflective person. I, I'm telling you, oh, now I'm giving you an answer to what <laughs> I know. I love it. I'm, I'm all for like any kind of therapy, like, please give it to me. So I, okay, I'll give you a little therapy. It's not, um, it's not really therapy, but I'll give you a little analysis. I do feel like you're very, you're analytical and you're thoughtful and you know the boundaries of it or where to stop, when to stop and how to move on. And I think that you're uh, reflective, but not to the point where it's a problem for you, where it's, it's very constructive rather than deconstructive. Does that make sense? Thank you. That's good to hear. I'll make my therapist listen to this and she. Miranda, you have to listen to this. <laughs> so, okay. Thank you so much for being open. And I mean, you're natural, obviously you're comfortable talking about everything. So. No, I appreciate you asked really nice questions and you made me feel comfortable. So I thank you. Thank you very much. Want to shop for some of Jenna Lyons looks? You can get them on my Amazon influencer storefront. I put a link down below. Would you like one of these really famous mugs that my guests get after doing the show? You can buy one. Just click on the link up here or in the description down below. Thanks for watching. Remember to subscribe for more of my talks with your favorite celebrities. Tap that notification bell too so you're notified once I drop a new video, which is about once or twice a week.